good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the boot camp. First, uh, I want to know who are in the audience. Uh, this is designed for non-programmers. So uh, let's see, how many computer science majors? Very good. If you are a computer scientist, this will be too easy, but uh, you will learn something. How many of them from uh, business majors? I believe many of them good. How many of them from kinesiology? One. How many of them from other sciences? Good. Good. And other majors? Uh, yeah, of course, communication design. We have quite a few. Right? Please raise your hand, communication design. That's good. Very good. So, but if, if someone kind of 20 some years ago, in the future, look back to our time, they will see this is an exciting time, especially using the mobile devices to create innovation and create a lot of business opportunity. And I, I will see that, you know, in a, maybe 100 years ago, there's a two camp of people. One can read, the other can, cannot read. I think in our time, it will be one group can, can program an app. The other group cannot because I have. Now that will make your career different. So I'm glad that many of you, this might be your first opportunity to create an app, even in a very short bootcamp, but you will get to know the process, the, the little bit of a mechanism behind it. Uh, I believe they will come with a functional, even simple app. So this is part of the, the IIED, that is the Institute for Innovation and Economic Development. It's funded by our tax dollars. It's managed by Dr. Brett Babo, Mary Jo Zeng, and myself. So we have a whole set of events. This is the beginning. In the, in the, in the next week, we have a salon talk about blue and green economy on Friday. And the week afterwards, we have Another book can focus on doing the app with programming background. Next week. Next week. Then quickly we'll have a, a hackathon to create a real a close to professional app in the beginning of the Thanksgiving week. January we'll have a startup weekend. That means you put your business together based upon technology or service you create. Then the grand finale for the whole academic year is starting from March, but end in May is a business plan competition we call Startup Challenge. If you win, there will be a real cash prize. Professor Bravo, how much is that this year? For students, it'll be $1,500. And for professional, for a real venture? If you do a real venture, it'll be $20,000. $20,000, that's real money. So put together your idea, put together your team, learn a lot today, and you have a chance not only, hopefully not only win, the prizes, but take your idea to market. Then we will name this building after you. <laughs> I want to really thank, of course, Dr. Bravo, Mary Jo Zeng, Ben, but the two wonderful computer science, technology, a professor organized and uh, present this, uh, this workshop and bootcamp. The one that helped us to kind of oversee a lot of events is Professor Miguel Lera. Miguel? The rock star of today is a brand new faculty that is, in, uh, is a, uh, with expertise in programming, in game development, in human computer interface. Is our new professor, Dr. Piet, let me make sure, Pietro Zek. <laughs> our quick combo will lead us for the next few hours. So let's again welcome the, our professor, Pietro Zek. Thanks for coming. I hope you will enjoy uh, this three hours uh, um, presentation and workshop. Let me first tell you what we'll be doing, because it's a long time, so we have to divide it into smaller chunks. And yes, there is a break. We don't need to sit here for three hours. So we'll start with the general idea, what you can do when you have an idea for an app. What, is, what are your options? Then we'll talk a little bit uh, about the market, uh, Android and uh, uh, or iOS market, and see 
uh, it doesn't it doesn't or does not make sense to address those markings. Then I want to talk about App Inventor, which is the way we will be creating apps in this workshop in the context of a lean uh, startup um, model. I don't know if you've heard about it. I will just quickly introduce it. I think it App Inventor uh, perfectly fits the startup model. And I was told, and I also see that there is uh, most students are from business, so it might be interesting for you to see how it fits into this uh, model. And after this very short presentation, we will actually create a program our first app in three minutes. It will be functional app in three minutes, uh, which I call Say Hello App. And it will be an app which is designed to convince my hardware. If you look like here, it's uh, actually a lot of you know, equipment and uh, cables not to break during the workshop. Because as you know, whenever there is a demo, something gets to break. I will talk to my hardware nicely and ask them uh, not to break. Then we will have a break, or maybe we'll start a little bit uh, before the break, to actually design a fully functional app, which we call Spot Locator, which was uh, uh, designed by uh, Dr. Lara. Uh, so we will be designing, we will talk about the, um, actually how, uh, what are the functionalities, and then if time allows, and I see that you are doing well in the workshop, I will actually challenge you to implement yourself some of the features which are missing in the version which I will show. So if everything goes well, at, at the end of this workshop, you should not only have an app, but you should have a basic ability to create simple apps, and then you can extend it to actually uh, build apps for your uh, startup businesses or for any other uh, purposes. Okay? So, so, the first question is, what do you do if you have an app idea? And of course, one possibility would be to hire a developer. Right? That's the easiest thing, that's what usually we do. We just hire developers, they build it for us, and we release the app. Well, the problem is that the ideas are cheap, so to say, even if they are good, but the development time is expensive. And uh, according to uh, TechCrunch, uh, development of a simple app, average uh, price of development of a simple app is between three and $8,000, so the account rate is $6,500, just to develop the first version of the app from your idea. And this is for simple apps. We're not talking about complicated stuff. It's just basic, basic stuff. So the question is, well, is it worth it to do it if you don't yet know if there is a market, if there is any traction, is anybody interested? Maybe there is a competition who is too strong, right? So investing so much money up front might not be the best option. So another option is to learn programming, right? So that's the best one, but the problem is it takes time. And uh, mobile development is particularly difficult, not <coughs> on the theoretical level, but because the hardware is so unreliable. You wouldn't leave out unreliable mo uh, mobile devices are in comparison with desktop computers. When you program on the desktop, it's a deterministic machine. What you tell it to do, it does it. On mobile, uh, the, uh, mach mobile machines are uh, still, even though they're not anymore uh, that new, they're here for uh, 10, well, 15 years, uh, they're still solid for the program because something breaks, there is no compatibility, somebody didn't follow the standard, and there's so many versions of the software, so many versions of the operating system. So it's uh, much, much harder to program a simple program on a mobile device than it is for uh, to do it on the desktop device. So if you took a programming ever, you'll be surprised how much harder it is. So this is an option if you are studying computer science, but it is not a viable option if you just want to release your app and see if there is any market interested. But there is a third option, which we are going to cover today. So the third option is to use a system which will build the app for you in such a way that it is both a real app so you can release it, but it also does not require uh, you to do the hardcore, uh, hardcore programming, so to say. So it basically abstracts the difficulty into a higher level and allows you to focus on the functionality on handy events and on design of uh, the interface instead of doing the hard work right away. So this third way uh, is, uh, there is many systems which do that. One of the, uh, the ones which are getting popular right now is uh, called App Inventor uh, version two, which is right now in beta. And this is what we will be using because I think it is one of the best uh, systems, especially it was developed at MIT and uh, with the help of Google, uh, and it's for Android, so it's also very easy to deploy. So what is App Inventor exactly? 
So App Inventor is a browser-based Android development system. What does it mean browser-based? It means you don't need to install anything to actually design an app. You just go to a website and you uh, use the, the website to create an app. Okay? We ask you to, uh, to download some stuff and install it, but this is an external things which we might use in the uh, workshop. But just if you just want to design an app, you uh, go to this website and uh, uh, open it, log in with your Google account, and that's, that's it. That's uh, you, you are done. Uh, it is designed for non-programmers, which is also very important. So it means it doesn't require you to know programming. It does require you to be able to think as a programmer, so to be able to design your app that it reacts to events, that it actually does something. So you have to be able to think uh, in a specific way, and that is something which you develop over time. But it has a nice uh, feature that it does not require to learn programming languages, so you can actually do it without taking programming classes. And you will see that, that it is uh, uh, amazingly uh, successful in, in delivering what, what it promises, that you, as a non-programmer, you can actually uh, create an app. But how you actually create the app well, it is a blog-based instead of programming-based uh, language. So maybe you heard about other blog-based uh, uh, pro uh, programming environments like Logo. Sometimes it's used in school. Un until recently, these things were used uh, mainly for education. But App Inventor 2 is so good that it actually works in a real uh, world. And people create apps for it. So just uh, a little bit of the background so you believe that the system is really good. Uh, it's not uh, written by somebody somewhere in, in the middle of nowhere. It is uh, designed uh, based on 40 years of research uh, at MIT and other uh, schools uh, into something called visual programming languages. So visual programming languages uh, is an idea that you can program by drawing instead of by uh, writing a code. Or not only drawing, but putting together pieces, like Lego. Basically, it's simulating the idea that in the real world, we actually take physical pieces and we connect them. So why not to write programs this way? And you know that traditionally writing programs is writing programs in the programming languages, which means writing specific code, which can then be translated to a machine code for a, uh, for, a, uh, for a computer. This is the other approach. This approach was not, like, it's not successful yet on a level that everybody uses all the time. And the reason is that for complex stuff, it is really not feasible because the pictures of the programs become huge and they are difficult to manage. It's easier to manage text. But for simpler apps, and simple uh, that doesn't mean doing nothing, it means most of the apps are on the level of simple app. You can use this uh, methodology and it's actually better because it's easier to understand the program, easier to extend it, and easy to manage. So it is very successful in the recent years uh, for that particular uh, subdomain or niche of, of the market, the simple apps. It was uh, created by a professor of computer science at MIT, Hal uh, Abelson, and uh, with help of uh, Google and uh, other faculty of MIT. And actually, there is a lot of pilots which were happening at the University of San Francisco, I heard. OK, so another thing which is why I really like the App Inventor 2 is that it supports the idea of a lean startup model. Anybody heard about lean startup? So it's, it, it, this is not uh, uh, maybe popular enough yet, but I think it's very powerful business model. So I have some background in uh, Silicon Valley startups. I was part of the Imagine K12 um, uh, incubator for one of my startups. And we were like basically taught that model as the best model for developing startups. So I now kind of uh, tell you what I learned there. And I really believe this is a great model. So the idea is very simple. When we think about getting to some goal in um, uh, in a business, in, especially in IT, we think that the road to this goal is from A to B, and it's kind of straight, right? So I want to, you know, I, am, I have an idea, I want to get an app, and I know what this app will be, so I just have to go there somehow. Through capital investments, through uh, uh, research and development, I will just go there, and I will achieve it. Or I am at this level of growth, and I will get to this level of growth, and it will just happen this way. But in reality, what happens is like this. You are trying to go there, but you don't really know where it is. You're looking for it. And this process looks completely chaotic. It's like, 
Oh, maybe I should do that. No, actually, that was a mistake. Oh, if I will do that. No, we we'll have to come back to the previous version, right? And then you get into this completely messy environment. And most of the business models try to address the messiness. You know, they, they say, oh, you have to follow this, uh, uh, this uh, project management uh, process, so that will help you. But what Lean Startup model says is that, no, you can't manage that. This is reality, it always will, will be like this. The only thing you can do is to try to ensure that when you go to this crazy path toward your goal, the path always goes a little bit further. It never goes back. So it never actually makes a mistake that it uh, turns back and put you back into some uh, position which you were already before. And the way it is done in the Lean Startup model is that when you have a that you have a cycle which is very short, sometimes even one week, which uh, has three important uh, elements. You have the idea, either for the initial app or the improvement on the app. Then you turn this idea into a product in a week, or in actually in three days, let's say, if you have a week. Not in uh, three months of development. Then you release it to your clients, maybe even testers, maybe beta testers, maybe community, maybe family at the beginning, that's okay. And they tell you, what they think about it. And based on that, you measure the data, not only what they say, but you measure everything about their usage, and then turn that data <coughs> into a learning process, and basically based on that, up, adapt to the next level. And it was shown, uh, this is used by uh, uh, Y Combinator, and they actually analyzed that data on very extensively and write papers about it. And it was shown that it really helps, statistically significantly improves the chances of getting from A to B uh, over the traditional messy model, let's do something which we have an idea to do immediately today, right? So, why I'm talking about this is because it is easy, it looks easy on paper, but try to do this cycle in one week cycles when you are developing, right? It takes so much time to develop features. It takes a week, two, three months to build the uh, minimum viable, viable project, product. But in App Inventor, it is possible. So as long as your idea is not complicated enough so that it cannot be realized in a system like App Inventor, you can very easily put this process to work uh, because the development process doesn't take so much time, because everything is abstracted and it becomes easy. And this is a perfect method, especially if you are not a programmer or you have somebody who is not uh, the top programmer but is helping you with, with uh, development and you want to quickly check if there is any interest in your app. So you have an idea, you release it, and then do it for two, three weeks, and then find out if there is an attraction. If not, then just drop it. Maybe it was not that good idea in the first place. Okay? So that's why I, in I encourage you to use uh, uh, App Inventor because it's, it supports this uh, system. Now, the question is, well, are there any real apps made in App Inventor? Is it, isn't it just a educational tool or maybe a, a gimmick or something which just doesn't really work, right? Nobody seriously uh, writes programs in le uh, Logo, right? Maybe you know this, this uh, language for, this for children or for education, but nobody really develops real serious applications in it. Well, it is not the case for App Inventor, and this is in a beta state, okay? The, the number two is in beta state. There were 11 million apps written in the last two years and four million developers is using it. I'm meaning four million uh, accounts is there, uh, actively 300,000 developers is actually using the uh, app event. So it's a huge thing. And not only that, not only for education or for process of starting to develop apps, it is actually, uh, uh, these apps are actually released to the market and they win awards. So this app, for example, Locatera, is written by a 14 year old uh, boy from India and it is uh, used by parents in India to track the children's position when they come back from uh, home when they are in the buses. So the parent can see where the child is, if he went to the bus or not, uh, if he's uh, on the way, when he will arrive, and expect a time. All of that written by a 14-year-old boy who doesn't have computer science education, obviously. Maybe he's a genius, but still, he didn't program it. He made it from blocks of the program. But there are also uh, real, more complicated apps like the uh, statistical analyzer for MBA, uh, which is completely written. You can download it, install it on your um, 
computer is pretty good app. It's complicated uh, app which you would pay this seven thousand dollars to develop if you paid uh, a developer to do it. So it is not that app inventor is just let's try it and then learn real programming. It's a developer where you actually can program stuff uh, and uh, get it released to, to a real map. Now, the only problem with uh, App Inventor is that it is Android only because it is led by Google, so even though it's totally possible to release it for iOS, they just won't do it. Uh, well, the thing is that it doesn't seem to be that much of a problem, especially for a, for a startup, right? Uh, first of all, Android is growing uh, and uh, iOS is kind of stagnating. I don't know the newer data, this is 2013, but I don't think it's changed that much since. I don't think uh, iOS is uh, taking grants uh, since then. It seems to be that Android is going to dominate because it is uh, the, not dependent on one company. Everybody can, can use their system. So that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't care that much if you cover the whole market or you can just use the 70% of the market for your startup, right? Because if you get to 1% uh, market saturation, uh, market share and you are uh, totally rich already, right? So that's not a problem, it's only 70%. But yeah, I forgot to mention there are other systems which work for iOS. Uh, one of the startups which does it is called Kino and uh, they create like app inventor for iOS. So it's also possible, I didn't check that uh, system, I don't know how good it is, but it slowly uh, starts. So now the question, enough of the theoretical talking, and now the question is how it actually works. How is that possible that we can create apps without knowing the program? And the reason is that in recent years, well, not that recent, but at least 15 years, uh, there is a shift in programming from uh, procedural programming when you tell the computer step by step what should be done and predict all possible situations to the idea that the programming should be a reaction to an event. So when something happens, do something, okay? And this change in, in paradigms really, is really well supported in, in the app um, uh, inventor too. So what it means is basically that you have uh, an app, so let's say this is an app, and initially nothing happens. There is a picture, this is not, uh, not nothing is happening. And then there is a button, okay? And only when you as a user press that button, then some code will be executed to fulfill the, uh, what this button is supposed to do. Or if uh, this is a, a GPS uh, application, so there, let's say there is a GPS uh, component, only when GPS location data is coming to the app and it's different than the previous one, only at this moment do something about this data. Maybe update your position on the map or something like this, right? So it is a reactive approach to programming. When something happens, you do it. And this is essential to understand how the app inventor works without understanding actually uh, the program part. Now, how the apps look like? So the first thing is that they are event-driven. It's called, when you have some reaction to the event, we call it event-driven programming. But it's also log-based programming. So it means that you're not programming in code, you're not writing, but you are putting together pieces of something which is code behind, like even hidden behind it is a code, but you actually uh, are putting together blocks, predefined blocks of code, which you can modify for your purposes. So if I ask you to tell me, what do you think, without knowing, you, you've never seen an app inventor, what do you think, this entire program here, what do you think this program is doing? Try to read it and tell me what, what it does, what is the feature? Not, you know, you're, I'm not expecting you to guess completely what is uh, what it is doing, but try to guess more or less what it is doing. Like, what do you think uh, might be the behavior? And, uh, yeah, and what what happens? So if you read from the top, it says when texting message received. There's like broken English saying when I get a uh, message, text message, right? Then do. Uh, what? Set texting phone number to the number which we receive. Set texting message to I'm driving now, text you later. And send that message. Right? So three things in, in a row. 
give me the number I got uh, the message from, give me the message, uh, send the message I want to send, and send that message to that person, right? Okay? And then, even better, so that's easy, right? We just, when, whenever our phone receives uh, a message, a text message, that it will respond, and I'm driving, so I'm not going to, uh, to uh, respond to it, it will say, I'm driving now, text you later, okay? But there is a next thing which happens here. What do you think this, this part does? Guessing is fine, yeah. Uh, it reads the message. Yeah, it actually uh, speaks out the message you have received, right? So it says, call text-to-speech, so use text-to-speech engine, which I have, and then create, join the message, and first say, you have received the following text from the number which we got earlier, and the message which we got earlier, right? So it is, uh, in, in basically one page of picture, like one, one uh, uh, image, we created an app, entire, this is an entire app, it's like working, can basically put it into an app inventory, it will work, which can respond to uh, uh, text messages when they are received. So it's reactive to the event of I got a message. It will send a message saying, I'm busy, I cannot talk now, I'm driving, I cannot talk now. And it will actually read this message to you. Uh, so you can actually, without touching the device, you can hear it. I find it amazing when I learned about uh, App Inventor that this can be done in one page of drawing pictures or putting together blocks. And if I wanted to write it as an app in uh, Java or Android, I guess it would be something like altogether probably 200 pages of code, but if I just write this code myself uh, and use other stuff, it would be probably three, four pages of code or more. So imagine uh, the difference. And this is when I will achieve exactly the same <laughs> Okay? So this is what I'm trying to convince you about. But let's actually do that, right? So I'm speaking already for half an hour. Let's do something, not just me saying that it's so amazing. So let's go to uh, the website. I will show you in a second. ai 2 appinventormit You can Google it. This here, okay, app inventor. And log in using your, there will be a login button, log in using your uh, uh, CSUMB account because it is a Google account. Hmm. So this is it. This is entire system of creating apps which is on um, a, a browser-based. Remember when I was saying what are the features of the App Inventor? It is a browser-based environment for creating an app. Okay, so let's uh, see what we have here. We log in, and then we get this view on our newly uh, created app. Actually, let's uh, create the first app from scratch. So we have a menu at the top, projects. We can say, start new project, and name it, welcome, Message. Okay. So this is an empty app which does right now does nothing. It already exists as an app. I could install it on my uh, phone, and it will be an app which will run, but does nothing. Yeah. Uh, where are you logging? Uh, there is a login button on the right side, uh, right uh, top corner. It says create, uh, start creating app. Yeah, they didn't put a login button. They said uh, they are saying uh, create apps. <laughs> should be logging because it's confusing. Everybody is logged in? Okay, so let me, if I open it in incognito, I can show you exactly. That's the login button for them, okay? It's very, I forgot about this, that it's not standard, so. You press create apps, 
and it asks you to log in with a Google account. Is logged in now? Any issues? Didn't break yet? It will break over time for sure. Something has to break. It's a demo. So, okay. So we see this uh, website when we can. Uh, the first thing we see is that we can. Something which looks like a screen from the Android device, right? So this is the place where we'll be this, uh, putting elements of our app which are interactive or display some information. So this is uh, basically our design it for our um, uh, user interface for the app. And we start with user interface because we are thinking from the event-driven um, uh, perspective of program. So we only want to react to something, so that's why we're creating elements to which uh, we can react when user presses a button or something like this. So let's do the first uh, basic thing, which would be put a button onto the screen so we have an app which has just one button. Okay. So on the left side, here, you have a palette with different elements of the user interface you can create. So uh, it says user interface, button, text box, list view, different kinds of elements which you can put into your app. To put that actual element into the app, you just drag it from there, so you hold the mouse button on it, and drop it on the uh, screen of the phone. Okay? And it's there. Okay? So, now I have a button on the screen, but it doesn't do anything, right? So first of all, it uh, says text to, uh, for button one. It doesn't have any action attached to it. So let's first change text for the button one uh, to something which will say listen to what I say. Or let's say listen to what I say. So how do I change that properties of a button? Uh, there is a panel called properties where you can change everything about this element which is selected here, right? So you have background, it's enabled, different font, font styles. It's a little bit like manipulating a Word document uh, characters or a word, right? You can change how it looks like. So I want to change the text on this button to say, <coughs> listen to what I say, okay? So the te to change text, I have it here, almost at the bottom of the page. It says text make it bigger for you. And I will change it to listen to what I said. Okay, and as you see, when I press anywhere else, <coughs> I got uh, the button to change it, its uh, loop, and now it says listen to what I said. Everybody is uh, happy? Yeah? Oh, okay, I thought you had a question. Now, we could just send that up and have it do nothing, but there is will be a button which, uh, which you can press, and uh, it will be a, a reactive button. It will actually look like a button. You can press it. There will be the sound of pressing of this button. So let's see if we can do that. I need to first uh, connect my mobile device. So this is a view of my um, Samsung device, which I have here. Okay. And you see that it says, listen. Oh, sorry. So this is the old app. Just Second. So how do I send the, the app to my uh, device? I select connect, and I am connected with USB, so I can do that. I will, in a second, I will explain to you how you connect with your uh, devices if you don't have USB with you. But let me just show you how it works first, okay? So now the app is trying to connect to, to my phone and send it to uh, Happy Paper is trying to send the application to the phone. Okay, probably succeeded, so let's see. Okay, so on my phone, I have now an app which with a single button listen to what I say, right? So this is the simplest app we just wrote. If I press that button, there is some sound of pressing, but nothing, nothing really happens, right? But it is already an app on the phone. Christoph, 
Yeah. So what software do you need to install on the Mac in order yeah. to to display your phone content? Yeah, I will. Uh, just in a second, I will go there. We will actually go through all of this in a very details, but this is a little complicated, so I wanted to show you first how amazing it is, how quickly it can be done. You don't need to follow the, uh, through the actual execution, okay, of this app. We will do the execution of the uh, app uh, from scratch, okay? So, I have this button, but it doesn't do anything. So one of the most important things you do in the app inventor is to design the action for that button, to re or rather a reaction to an event when this button is pressed. So I do that in the other tab of, the design, uh, of this app. Here is a designer. When I press blocks, I will get a view where I can program my reactions to the app based on events, okay? So let me just do it, and then we will discuss how it is done. So I want to say, when button one is pressed, do something. And I don't know yet what should be done. Well, what I want to, uh, to be done, I want to have this app listen to what I say, okay? So I will say, give me a speech recognizer. And also I want to, uh, it to speak to me. So I know I didn't explain it. I will go to it uh, in a second. But I just uh, said here, when I click, I want you to recognize what I'm saying. And then I want you to say to me something which is in this round. OK? that it promises not to break. Okay, so let's try. Uh, hey, do you promise to not to break during this demo? When you receive the text, then do it once again. Okay, now don't break. Okay. I promise I will behave and won't break. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, in a very, very uh, fast way, I just wrote an app with one mistake, which is obviously has to happen, uh, which can, uh, to which I can speak and it will actually answer. I didn't explain how it works, I just wanted to show you how quickly you can get it. Because if you think about it, uh, you get this, uh, uh, you have this idea, I want to have an app which talks to me when I'm lonely, right? And you call a, a developer uh, and uh, say, hey, how much you would charge for an app which will talk to me when I'm lonely? And it would be like, hmm, okay, well, it's artificial intelligence, that's 10,000. I need like a database of uh, interesting things to say, that's uh, 5,000, maybe 50,000 I can do it, right? And now you can answer, no way, I can do it in five minutes in App Inventor, okay? So right now I hope you are convinced that this is a powerful tool, because I showed you a live programming with a mistake on my side, which basically created that app. Now, let's see if we can distribute that app to you. So that is the method which we will be using today, because my setup, if you see here, is like a lot of cables, and we ask you to uh, download some software, and you can try to do it this way, but I just worry there will be too many issues. But there is a one way to distribute the app, which is absolutely amazing, as long as our network doesn't break, which is 
that I just go to connect and actually uh, to build and say create that app and provide a QR code for it so anybody who sees the QR code can download it. <coughs> okay? So one thing which you need to get this app from my system in a second to your system is uh, to have the app uh, com uh, inventor companion. So MIT A uh, I2 companion. Everybody have it downloaded for the Android devices? So you just have it downloaded, please open that app and scan the code. Hopefully, you can scan the code because it's in the connection. Okay? Open the app, try to scan the code. It only works for Android, Yeah, it only works for Android, unfortunately. And basically what should happen is that you get that app onto your device and when you speak to it, it will answer that it will not work. Anybody has Android devices? I just want to see that it's working for our watch. If you can read, uh, it might be too far. Yeah? Is it okay? It's too far? Okay, so let me try to do it on my device. To show you how it works. There's a scanner here. I need to scan it here. Oops. And I can disconnect. Sorry, just a second. So I got the app on my uh, phone. And this app stays there on my phone right now. I can speak to it if I'm lonely. Uh, can you say something? I will behave at one break. You already broke twice. <laughs> so the process of transferring the app to your device is actually even more complicated than writing the app. It took more time, right? So that is a good sign because if something if delivering something is more complicated than writing it, that already means that writing it is pretty easy. Okay? So now I hope you are convinced that this is a great system to, to work with. So let's go and actually create an app from scratch, which will be a pretty complicated uh, system, okay? So here is the idea. So the idea for the app we will be working today is called, uh, the app will be called Spot Locator, okay? Spot Locator will be an app that records the current location of your of where you are, wherever you are, and then it can direct you to that location if you forget where it is. So it is a fully functional app which you could even try to release, maybe for free, or maybe charge for it. Uh, and uh, basically, it helps you remember nice places, right? So you can uh, locate it. For example, if you have a, uh, if you park your car uh, and you think you might forget where you parked your car, you can record this place and then it will direct you to the car with the quality of the GPS which is up to three meters uh, uh, in the distance from your car. Or if you are going to a restaurant and uh, maybe you would like to remember the restaurant, you go to many restaurants, you, you are worried that you will forget its name, then you can record this location and then retrieve it whenever you are uh, interested to go to the game. Or you go to a camping and you think that some spot was great but you don't know where exactly you are, so you can record the GPS location and this way you can find it, right? So this looks like a 
middle size or small size app which could actually be useful, right? It's not doing just one gimmick like speaking to me, but it actually has a lot of features, remembers places, let it show you directions, and so on. So if you do try to order this app, this will, this will be the size of an app where I think uh, a developer will charge around $3,000, $4,000 to develop it. But we are going to create that entire app, taking into account all the mistakes on the way on, the issues which can happen with mobile devices, within the next two hours. It will be a fully functional app which you can just release to the Android part. So that's, uh, I think it's a great uh, possibility. Okay, so let's make a short break and then we can go to actual uh, workshop which will be for like one and a half uh, hours. Okay. Let's get through this because I was thinking about what, what's going to be appropriate for this. Um, let's get through this and we'll figure it out. It might be, uh, it might be send me your app, it might be, you know, whatever it may be. I also have a record of this here, so I may just do it off the bat. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Is that a surprise to me? <laughs> 